still TBD as we expected. So joining us to talk about the big picture so far is Marcus Delartino from First Strategic Communications. Marcus, great to see you. I know it was a late night, so thanks for waking up early with us. Is it morning? <laughs> yeah, we, okay. who knows where? Good. We Good. finally got there. Yeah, you're back here with your friends <laughs> at 3TV um, and, and, and CBS5. Okay, so let's go through a couple of what we know, the ones that are a lock. I mean, we had some congressional seats that were unopposed. Yeah, uh, you know, certainly, and the legislature, there was a lot of locks, mm -hmm. uh, but we certainly had a lot of those races that were determined early on. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, the, the real contentious ones, of course, are sort of back here at home. Mm -hmm. So as we look at uh, the Mark Kelly race, is certainly going to be a long week uh, for that one, and Secretary of State will be a long one this week. Uh, we'll get some data trends th today, about 5 o'clock, when we make another drop, and we'll be able to sort of make some conclusions about maybe what the rest of the week looks like. Uh, but some of these races are really tightening up. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we opened up last night, Democrats pretty much ran the board at 8 right. o'clock. Uh, right. Even in some East Mesa districts that are heavily, heavily conservative, mm -hmm. Democrats were winning. So you knew something, something was coming, right? Um, and as uh, Election Day voters showed up, we knew that Republicans were going to show mm -hmm. up at the polls, and that's exactly what happened. And a lot of those drops happened at 2 in the morning last night. So mm -hmm. you might have seen Mark Kelly with a 200,000 vote edge uh, at 8 o'clock last night or 9 o'clock last night. But as you wake up this morning, it's down to 100,000 votes. So many people expected the red wave, which really just didn't happen. I mean, obviously, a lot of Republicans did win. But what happened to the red wave? I think, you know, I think it's maybe a little bit too early to, to tell. I think we'll have a, uh, what we really want to know is we know who those folks are that cast early votes. Mm -hmm. We know who those folks were that showed up at the polls. Republicans outnumbered uh, Democrats and even independents combined uh, at the polls. Who are the folks that took their ballot, already filled out, and mm -hmm. dropped it in the bin? That's what we're looking for today. Are those Republicans and may contribute to a red wave, mm -hmm. or are those more Democrat, independent, or moderate voters? Yeah, is that a procrastinator? Is that somebody who is actually still making up their minds towards, you know, the final hours as well? Um, so when when we're waiting on this, obviously we hear a lot of pushback from people who say, oh, it never used to be this way. We used to always know. Um, that's just that, that's just incorrect, right? I mean, even thinking of a couple of years ago with Martha McSally and Kirsten Cinema. Yeah, I keep hearing the same thing, and it's just simply not true. Okay. Um, we've been up to the wee hours for a very long time in Arizona. You, most of the public has not been out, but now they're f focused on politics. They are entwined in it, um, and they think that somehow this is working differently. It always works like this. And what also slows the system down are those, what I call the toaster voters. They lay their ballot next to the toaster, and then election day panic and run down to the polling place. Those folks, those ballots need to be counted this week. That's what's going on. That slows down the process. If you voted on election day, your ballot was counted. So how do you see the governor's race playing out right now? Hobbs is in the lead, but these votes continue to come in from counties, which mm -hmm. are a lot of Republican, and then we still have a big drop coming from Maricopa County. Sure, and I, what's interesting as you're looking at the results this morning is Mark Kelly's vote lead and Adrian Fontes's vote lead for Secretary of State are tracking somewhat similarly, around 100,000 votes. Mm -hmm. uh, but the rest of the statewides are tracking. So Katie Hobbs, Chris Mays, uh, superintendent of public instruction are tracking similarly. That vote count on those races is getting really tight. Right. We're at 25,000 votes. Mm -hmm. If these votes coming in tonight start to trend in the Republican direction, which I suspect they may, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, I think by Friday, I think by today, one, that's going to get closer. And I don't know if they have enough runway to sort of, to last that election. I think that those seats might be picked up by Republicans. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we always are. appreciate uh, you coming in and joining us and talking about this. Yeah, it's it's we, it's our desire to have everything tied up in a bow, and yeah. right, <laughs> I, uh, like and the endless election. Boy, wouldn't we all love that? But you know, this is the process. Yeah. We all just need to be patient and wait our turn. And, and real we'll quick, there. with the tabulation problems yesterday, and all of a sudden people oh. are complaining. Here we go again. What was your take on all of that? You know, I it's. We have problems every election. I think like they're it. heightened now, yeah. uh, largely because everybody wants to pay attention to those, right. the media, the candidates, the special interests that are involved. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the process works. All right. Marcus, thank you thank so you, much. Marcus. Always good to see you. Up until 1 in the morning, it's still with us. Look, You look like you got a full night's rest. <laughs> <laughs>